Hey guys, my name is Tessa, and today we're going to be doing massage for people that suffer from shin splints and just sore legs in general. And I am working on the lovely Karina today. Today, um, I'm going to start with Karina's lower leg. This outer edge, the tibialis, is um, kind of the culprit of a lot of that shin splint pain. So. I'm going to start by just some um, compressions on that muscle and you can see with my hands what I'm doing. I'm just going to press along that. You don't want to press right on the bone. You want to press right on the muscle. So I'm just going to press and you don't want to use all of your strength doing this. You want to just warm up that muscle and just working my way down and you can also use your thumbs to work on the other side of this bone there are muscles in this area as well so you can do compressions with both parts of your hand if you want I'm just working my way down again. And you can even work your way down into the ankle. There's little muscles in there that tend to get tight. You can work your way all the way down there. And once you've warmed up that muscle a little bit, you can get your oil. And you want to just start to do a little bit more. And you can even massage that calf. And you can do a little bit of Swedish massage in that calf to warm it up. And sometimes you'll have to actually move the leg over a little bit so you have better access to that area. And if you see any bruises or anything like that, you want to go a little bit lighter, obviously, over the bruise. And you want to start, you're going to start in the ankle and you're going to work your way up where you did compressions. And I'll usually... stop for a minute when I feel tension in that tibialis muscle and I'll work my way over that area more than one time. Just working my way up. Going nice and slow. Up that tibialis muscle. And you want to work the inside portion of the leg as well, just along that bone. Working the extensor a little bit. And just working my way up. And so all of this is using the heel of my hand and just pressing that area. And you want to be sure that you're not bending your wrist too much. So you might need to step back a little bit from your client or your whoever you're working on. So that you're using your weight, your core strength more than pressing with your wrist or your hand. And you can begin to work this tissue a little bit more just by doing little circles along the tibialis. And just doing little circles. Be sure that you're not tensing your shoulders or upper back too much. So you can there. You can start to just slow down a little bit and get into that tibialis a little bit more. Okay. 
and you might feel a fair amount of tension. I'm going to go ahead and work this muscle with my thumbnail to move her leg a little bit. So you can do a little more detailed work with your thumb if you just do little circles. You're just going to work your way down that leg and that muscle and you want to work your way all the way down into the ankle Oops. is that pressure okay Karina and again just working my way down If people really like deep tissue, you can even use your elbow to get into that muscle. And I'll show you how. You definitely need to make sure that this leg is at an angle a little bit. And you're just gonna place your elbow right along that muscle. And just working your way down like so and really pay attention to how you're using your body okay the muscle all the way down and after doing deeper work like this it's good to do some Swedish or something lighter more fluid, usually revisit this, just need that a little bit. And I want to work the inside of that leg a little more all the way up and you can even use your thumb to do some more detailed work that extensor in there yeah. sure sorry um, thanks for telling me so that extensor going up my time at that area it's fairly tight and pay attention to your body if your thumb starts to feel tired really back off a little bit you can Use the palm of your hand. Using a broader surface area can be helpful too if your client is really sensitive in a certain area. Um, just using more of your body to massage it is helpful. And you can start to massage the top of the foot and ankle a little bit more. The feet and the lower part of the leg is very connected. So it's good to get into these feet a little bit too. You want to work into the ankle. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah, Problem. And you can, are your feet ticklish? No, I think it's like these like weird little like tender spots. That yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to work the top of that foot a little bit. Just doing little circles. Stimulating the top of the foot and those little muscles in there. There's a ton of muscles in your feet. It's 
really good to massage all of that. And again, be careful that you're not hunching over too much. And you can use your other hand to stabilize that foot as you're doing those little circles. You can just end that portion of the lake how you started. And I'd like to work the calf a little bit more now, so I'm going to have Karina go ahead and flip over if you would. Normally I would obviously do this leg. I'm going to do this so the view is a little bit better. And I get right into this calf muscle. And you can just warm everything up. Get that oil on there. And you can get that oil onto the foot. A lot of the times people don't realize that their foot is so connected to the calf. I'm just working on this calf first. So with this, I'm just using the heel of my hand and I'm working my way up the center and then the sides of that calf. I'm going to do some Swedish, just warming up everything a little bit more. So, doing just little circles. Um, if you don't have a lot of time and you want to work on the calves more than the front of the lake, you can get into the muscles in the front just by reaching under like this. And it's also a less invasive way to work the tibialis when the person you're working on is face down. And even working the inside of that calf. And coming back to just some nice even strokes at that calf muscle. Hang into the side. And normally I would be facing the other direction. I'm just going to do this the other way so that it's easier to see. So usually I would be working like this with my forearm this way. And I'd be standing on the side of the table. It's a lot easier. I'm going to work this way so you can see what I'm doing. So you want to start on that Achilles heel. You really do need to get into that Achilles because there's a lot of tension that can build up in that area and you don't want to press too hard to start. You want to just warm that up and then you can work that forearm up the center. And just remember that normally I would do this on the side. It's a lot easier to do this forearm work, but you can start to just jiggle a little bit. This is a great way to work the muscle and it's also a distraction technique. So if your friend or client is really tight, you can distract them a little bit. And then you can work your way up the side of the leg as well. There's three major muscles in the calf and it's important to work all of them. So side to side in the middle. And if you don't like to jiggle, that's fine. You can just work your way up those muscles. And it can be helpful to, to work the inner part 
of that calf, it can be helpful to use your other forearm. So you're just gonna work this way. And again, I'm not using my elbow, I'm using just above my elbow to work my way up. And if your partner, if your friend is really tight, you can just work your way up like this, jiggling. And because this is a broader surface area, it's going to be a lot easier to work out that tension. It's going to be less painful. And it's just a great idea to combine a few different techniques and keep it interesting. And if your client wants more detailed work, you can actually use your thumbs. And it's good to start in the middle of the calf and you're actually going to bring your thumbs together like this and you want to jiggle because you're doing more detailed work it's good to jiggle a little bit and not just press and work your way up you can do that too and remember to relax your shoulders I'm just working my way up that calf and you want to work all three muscles in there. So you can just work the side and bring your thumbs up that muscle, jiggling a little bit. If you feel any pain in your thumbs, then you might want to go back to using your forearm or your hand. You don't want to hurt yourself doing this at all. If you feel tension, you want to just linger there a little longer, getting in there. And I want to work the inside of that calf a little bit more. Just bringing my thumbs up the inside, and you can't see that well, but let's work in that inside of the calf. And not moving too fast or too slow. Just getting in there. And getting into that Achilles a little bit more. The best way I found to work on the Achilles is with the heel of my hand. So I'm just pressing. And you want to start all the way at the top of the heel and work your way all the way to the top. You can work your way towards the calf. That Achilles goes up fairly high. And a healthy Achilles is going to definitely help prevent shin splints. I'm just stimulating that area. You also want to work the little muscles around the heel and you can just place your fingers and do little circles right alongside there. And I was talking before about how connected your feet are to what's going on in here. Whenever you run a lot or you're really active, your feet actually contract and draw in. That's what happens when your calves contract. So it's a great idea to just work on the feet when you're doing this kind of work on the calves. And if you're working on someone with really sensitive feet, you want to use a broader surface area. I'm going to start with that. You want to use your soft fists and you want to be in a comfortable position. And you can go ahead and just hold this foot and you want to use that soft fist to work your way down the foot. 
really paying extra attention to the arch, the outer edge of that foot. And if people have ticklish feet, they can usually handle this soft fist work. If you want to do more detailed work, you can work with your thumbs. And normally I would work on this side of the table, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to work on this side. So you're just going to work that arch of the foot with your thumb. And when you have someone with a lot of calf issues, calf tightness, you want to work on that outer part of the foot as well because that's what makes the foot draw in and contract. So you want to just use your thumb to get in there. And this is a lot easier if you're using lotion. Sometimes it's tough to get a very smooth movement on the feet without lotion using oil. I'm gonna make it work. And you can begin to use both thumbs. You're just gonna do one after the other, working the center part of that foot. And you wanna stimulate this tendon in here. Sore feet and the front part is often because this tendon is a little inflamed in here or just tight. So you can just press with your thumbs right here and stimulate that a little bit. People with plantar fasciitis tend to have issues with this tendon. So you wanna just make sure that's nice and healthy. And you wanna press, just stimulate that area. And you can spend as much time as you like on the feet. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So I'm gonna just work on these toes a little bit, just pressing. And that's all the time we have for today. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the other videos in my full body series soon if you like this one. And I hope you have a great day.